Is that? I'll call this um, Town of Island Haven Select Board meeting to order for Tuesday, August 30th, 2022. Um, in attendance is Jake Thompson, Leslie Dyer, Don Young, myself, Donald Poole is absent. Elizabeth is not here. She's absent. And in her place, Gabe is just here to operate the, um, she's the tech, she's the IT lady. <laughs> and Marjorie Stratton, town manager. I should say just, because that's very important. <laughs> All righty, so um, approve the agenda. Can, can we move the, uh, the aquaculture up to after speakers from the floor? That is up to everybody else, I guess. Doesn't matter to me, whatever anybody thinks. I think that's what some people are here for. So. Do you want to put it as? I just thought we could just take it out of order and do it. You want to move it up to? Um, so move second. Well, wait, where do you want to move it to? Just after, after we do speakers from the floor, then we'll just put it there. Put it there. Is that after okay. six? So it'd be like seven, six A or something. I don't know what you want to call it. Do you want the Hurricane Island up there too? Because that's David. Yeah, he's, yeah. If he's here. We, why don't we? Can we, can we move eight ahead of seven? How is that? That's what I should yeah. probably say. Okay, just let's let's swap seven let's and eight. Is that a five? All right. Second. All those in favor? I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? <laughs> the minutes from the August 16th, 2022 select board meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Approve and sign treasurer's warrant number nine. Do you guys have the signatures from me here? Or do you need that? Um, there's two. Don's got to well, sign that one. I make a motion that we approve. Second. There are two pages, Leslie. Okay. Second. All in favor? Assume Don's in favor since he's signing it. Uh, number five, do we have communication? Any communications? I have none. Six speakers from the floor. I don't think Don, Don didn't sign that. Second. Yeah. Being none. So we will go to seven. Um, we move seven, eight to seven. So old business. Model Aquaculture Development Moratorium Ordinance. And I turn that off. It's a little. Oh loud. sure. I, I'm trying to hard. I was just trying to get some air. Yeah. And maybe if it's just turned down, I, I it's kind of loud in my. That it is loud. Okay. Um. Thank you. So I don't know who wants to um start. If David wants to speak first, David, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me, but I would just like I would just like us to be able to um just one at a time, you know, don't interrupt each other. And if you have a question, um raise your hand and we'll do it that way. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. So does Anybody want to start? David? Um, sure. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I just want to, you know, I'm I'm here kind of in two different capacities on two different matters. I think what you guys have before you here is uh, is a legislative proposal um, from Protect Maine's Fishing Heritage. Uh, and that's an organization that I do some work with um, elsewhere. Uh, and so given my uh, and our firm's role as a town attorney, I'm not here advocating one way or the other on whether uh, Vinyl Haven should move forward with legislative um, approval uh, or this sort of legislative um, proposal. Um, but uh, I did want to make myself available to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so that's the kind of the capacity in which I'm I'm here. Okay. 
So we've been asking some questions about like what we can actually do as a town. Can we designate certain areas off limits? Can we designate certain types of leases off limits? Can we designate certain species off limits? We just, we don't know, really know exactly if what we can do or if we can do anything as a town. So um, we thought, Crystal thought maybe you could just as a lawyer tell us some of the things that were allowed, I guess. Sure. And, um, you know, I, I'll start out by saying that um, the easiest thing to start with is probably the thing you can't do. Um, that's the thing that's clear is in terms of this landlord tenant decision, what I think of is the the state of Maine deciding whether they want to grant a lease and let someone have kind of an exclusive exclusive use of a postage stamp of the ocean for aquaculture. That leasing decision is something that only the state can do. And 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 the reality is that regardless of what you do um, to regulate aquaculture within your municipal boundaries, the state's probably going to continue to do what they're going to do. So. But like anything else, you you know, for someone to operate a business like that, they have to both have the property rights to do it. In this case, it would be from the state and uh, and whatever necessary approvals. Um, and those might be um, state, federal and potentially municipal. Um, so uh, those are all good questions. And, and the answer is that um, Towns have broad home rule authority and none of it has really been tested in the aquaculture arena. You may well be able to designate certain areas, areas of the municipality um, to sort of zone the ocean. Um, you know, certainly there's express authority under uh, um, the harbor master provisions that extends to uh, the selectmen and to the municipalities adopting ordinance that allow you to designate channels um, for navigation and to keep those free of equipment, including fishing equipment and presumably aquaculture equipment. Um, separately, there is also express zoning authority for you to zone structures that are in the ocean. Um, and so you may be able to zone certain areas as allowable for certain types of structures. Now, if you exercise the zoning authority, then you have to comp comply with the various requirements to adopt zoning ordinances. So, um, you know, the some towns are kind of taking a two-step approach. The first one is to uh, potentially adopt a, a time-limited moratorium, a temporary moratorium for a few months while they figure out um, what their options are and how they might want to approach other uh, the other regulations. So that's my kind of, the short answer is, I think all of the things that you proposed are uh, potential possibilities. Um, some of them may be more difficult than others. Your authority to regulate um, uh, uh, certain activities that DMR does when you get down to like which species you can grow or not grow that you may be encroaching closer to um, the uh, the realm of what the state has exclusive authority over but in terms of regulating structures and commercial activity in a fixed location including over the water you're probably a lot closer to what towns have traditional home rule authority on. So we can't limit like the lease size because the state sets that, right? Like we can't say we don't want anything bigger than say five acres, just throwing out a number there. Um, you know, it's possible to regulate the size of the commercial activity. So like, uh, especially if you do it in a way of kind of like cumulative structure area that their gear takes up. Um, so, you know, it's, I guess, the you may be able to limit the the size in ways other than limiting a lease size if that makes sense it's kind of like just because someone leases a 40 acre piece of land uh, doesn't mean that the town can't limit the size of a commercial building within those 40 acres and so that would be kind of the equivalent approach the town could take in the aquaculture context you can't 
prevent the state from granting a larger lease than five acres, but you um, you probably can regulate the uh, the activity that occurs within that lease. You say probably. Well, well again, um, so if you do the zoning, right, then uh, if you take a zoning approach, then there are requirements like it has to be consistent with your comprehensive plan and you have to follow those various approaches. So so that's a like a, a fact specific analysis that the town, you know, could engage um, someone to, to look at. Um, and then, uh, you know, there there are certain there are going to be certain things that the state is going to say you're too close to what we do. Um, and the reality is, is there's probably a difference of opinion between the municipal bar and the lawyers who are advising the Department of Marine Resources about where exactly that line is. And a court hasn't ruled in ruled on it yet. So, you know, I just want to be careful and I don't want to say that something is entirely clear um, where there are gray areas. There are certainly some clear areas, as I indicated, there's express a statutory authority on keeping open channels, and there's express statutory authority on regulating structures in and over the water. Um, so there's some things you can definitely do. There are other things that you can um, probably do, and then there, and then depending on the approach a municipality takes, there are procedural requirements that you'd have to comply with. Okay. So I'm always thinking about this from an administrative point of view, naturally. So if we right now have a hearing and um, have a vote on whether the you know, have a town vote on whether we want this uh, aquaculture development moratorium ordinance. This is for 180 days. Um, I just feel like this town has a lot on its plate in the next year or so. So my question to the board would be, you know, how important is this to you? If it's that important, then fine, make that decision. But at the end of this 180 days, even if this moratorium ordinance passes, then there's kind of an expectation that you will develop an ordinance. Uh, you know, I don't really want to develop that ordinance. Who's going to be tasked with doing that? Would you form a committee to do it? Um, so these are the administrative things that I think about. And going forward, I mean, you. I gave you a list of things that we have on our plate in this coming year. Um, I guess the biggest thing is our big uh, construction downtown project. So I guess the thing that I would think about is how important is this to you? Uh, and if it is, fine, but um, that's what I'm thinking about. One of the things I'm thinking about. Emily? I have a question for David. Uh, it was my understanding, uh, this is Emily Lane, and uh, I have a chalk farm here in Vinyl Haven. Um, one of the things that I have always understood was that the town had no authority in state waters. And my understanding is that the intertidal lands are considered to be local, but the submerged lands and the ocean are not. Um. Yeah, there are nuances to that. So the towns certainly have authority in state waters. You can employ a harbor master. You issue moorings. You um, you keep channels open. Um, and I said that there's um, zoning laws talk about structures not just to the low tide line, but structures over the water that municipalities can regulate. So you have regulatory authority there. the The distinction is um, when you when you consider when you're in terms of the property rights, that's the way that I would make the distinction. In terms of the property rights determination, the state is the uh, owns all land underneath the ocean below low tide out to about three miles. Um, and, um, and so when they're granting a private lease to an aquaculture operator, what that is in some ways is that's like a a temporary limitation on public trust rights that might otherwise exist in that area, right? It gives the lessee, the lease owner, 
um, some exclusive rights there to exclude certain uses. Only the state can do that below the low tide line. Um, a municipality can do it in the intertidal zone because there's statutory authority under the aquaculture leasing statutes. And so in the intertidal zone, the state doesn't own that property. It might be the a private landowner that owns the intertidal zone, uh, and it often is. But even when a private landowner owns the intertidal zone, if there is, if a municipality meets certain conditions, like you need to have a, um, a, a, a shellfish um, committee uh, and meet the other requirements of the statute, then the, um, the statutes delegate to the towns the ability to exclude um, other public trust uses, including you know, a fishery or the public trust rights to harvest the wild, you know, kelp or um, or rockweed or uh, or shellfish that might be in that intertidal zone. If that makes sense. We also have one other question. Go ahead. Um, when you at the uh, in section one model agriculture development moratorium, uh, you reference. Um, under the moratorium, agriculture development is defined as construction or operation of a commercial facility on, in, or over Maine's coastal waters. Um, you group submerged lands and intertidal together, and we've already discussed that. It says the culture of finfish and nets or pens or other enclosures or for the suspended culture of any other marine organism. And then you go on at the end or at the end of the, the paragraph. Um, this would temporarily defer all large scale offshore commercial finfish aquaculture development. Is this strictly for finfish or is this also for other types of aquaculture? Because um, yeah, and so um, the I just want to start out by saying, you know, the the model moratorium is something that can be a starting point for a town so you can decide on whatever the language is. But that language gets at not just finfish, it could um, it could be changed, but that gets at the suspended culture of marine organisms, which is what the DMR statutes, how they approach um, shellfish and uh, um, and uh, kelp and other seaweed aquaculture. Uh, the distinction there was that uh, was a distinction between kind of land-based and water-based aquaculture. The land, you know, there are some land based projects that are going on in the state and they are subject to a bunch of environmental laws and rules at the state level, the Natural Resources Protection Act and the Site Location of Development Act and those types of things that um, the statutes currently exempt um, uh, in water aquaculture from. And so some municipalities are looking at that as a reason why um, municipalities need to step in uh, and fill a void where the legislature has kind of created an exemption now that the in-water aquaculture industry has um, matured somewhat. Um, so that's what that language is getting at. But again, I also want to just reiterate that I'm not here kind of advocating um, one way or the other, um, given my kind of uh, relationship with the municipality and our role as, as, uh, as town attorney. So that any language, any, anything that the town wanted to do, um, we could work to um, find the language that got to do that within, you know, within whatever the legal constraints are the town has. Um, but that second provision that kind of discusses finfish isn't meant to kind of limit the broader language in the first part. Thank you. Crystal, do you have a question? Uh, no, I just, a quick comment. Um, I noticed that they someone said 180 days um, and it's you can renew it once. And I would just say that, you know, American Aqua Farms in Frenchman Bay hit people out of the blue and it was, it's, it's been a heavy lift and we fully expect them to come back. So I just put that out there as a reminder. Okay, thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? I think you pretty much answered everything I had. I, I 
kind of get what he's talking about now. I mean, he's cleared things up for me. Okay. So I don't know if he has for everyone else, but I think I kind of understand what he's talking about on the zoning. We have control over zoning stuff, not right. So, and if we wanted to establish channels here in different places, we could probably. I mean, the only established channel I assume is the ferry channel, but like you couldn't have someone build something in the middle of the only way out of Robert's Harbor or some exactly. other place like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean by the the part that we can control the water by. Like you couldn't build a dock across some harbor where there's 20 other docks inside and close it off and make it into a lobster pound. No. So I assume that's what he what he meant by those are the kind of statutory things we could. Well, we've only ever regulated the sands in the harbor for the town, so we'd have to change some language if we want to do things like that, I assume. Is that right, David? Um, yeah, in broad brush, that's right. I mean, there are, you can adopt uh, municipal wide land use regulations that are kind of like um, uh, site plan type regulations that don't have to go through all the requirements of zoning. Um, and so you might be able to regulate some structures that way. Um, but uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're right in that the, the Harbor Master statutes that talk about designating channels and stuff, you'd have to go through that process of, of identifying those. Um, and you could certainly prohibit structures that cut off um, what the town determines are necessary navigational channels. Yeah, I don't know. Even if we had a 360 day moratorium, we would have enough time to do all that stuff. But it would stop someone from coming in out of the blue when we have nothing, right? No thought well, process think, at all. I think we should maybe see if anyone wants, is interested in forming a, some kind of a committee to recommend ideas like Marjorie said. I don't know. And we, we did mention before taking it to the town and just Having a, well, they have to. Well, in order to adopt the moratorium ordinance, there's a public hearing and then a town meeting. Right, that's what I was alluding to. It would seem to make sense to be prepared if something does happen out there, because if you look at it, so I look at it, our main responsibility here as a town is probably to protect the fishing that we have, the lobster. So anything that interferes or limits the ability of our lobster fishermen to fish their traditional grounds uh, needs some serious thought before we go along with it. Well, I don't disagree, but I have to think about what Marjorie said about if we adopt this um, uh, memorandum, uh, this uh, moratorium, we're going to have to have, have a committee that knows, we're going to have to have some experts on a committee that know, you know, are very well informed, and I, I, quite frankly, I don't have much faith in that. Crystal, what did other towns do in terms yeah. of getting a committee together? So we have seven towns now. Some chose to do a committee. Um, the others I have spoken with, and I just put this in the chat to everyone. I said, protect. well, I said we, but it's Protect Maine's Fishing Heritage Foundation will be offering an ordinance in the next few weeks because people need some help for the very reasons that you stated. Emily, did you have another yeah, question? Also, uh, you know, just to remind you, you also need to be able to monitor that ordinance. And that's another responsibility that falls on either probably the harbor master. Would be the harbor master, yeah. 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 And, you know, the fiscal liability to monitor it as well. I will just say one more thing, if I can. You know, that... Um, when this hit, you know, people had to scramble really fast and they are still working on it because we believe American Aqua Farms is definitely coming back. They've said they are. And if you have something in place, I keep thinking about, you know, don't let the perfect be the enemy of good and you would be further along than you are now. And there is a ton of foreign investment money coming in. Mm -hmm. 
I think we should wait, see what this ordinance that they're proposing looks like, and and wait for Donald to get back from his vacation before we bring it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that really makes that much of a difference to have one the other board member. I mean, no, but I mean, as far as but then the ordinance will be out before. When is the meeting. ordinance? When does that? When is that expected to be? Crystal, did you say? Yeah, in two to three weeks, I should have it complete. Okay. It'd be good to look at it for the final decision. He should be back. I think yep. that, um, yeah, this is all <laughs> kind of. Well, this is just a fact finding mm -hmm. thing yep. anyway. Right. We don't have to make any decisions tonight. Right. So. right. But I appreciate you guys' time and answering um, some questions. So, anyway, yeah, I think that's a good idea. We should just wait for you to uh, get that ordinance and bring that back to us. I mean, we could discuss it. We do have a meeting October. If you want Crystal to do that, or... uh, we'll see what happens. In yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that why you guys want to do just? I mean, obviously we're not going to do anything right now, but we need to gather as much information as we can. So yeah, it can't hurt to see. Go ahead, Crystal. Uh, no. Um, I'm. I just will get it to you as soon as I possibly can. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Alrighty then. If there are no more questions, we'll move on to the Hurricane Island abatement request. Thank you very much. Thanks, Emily. So this, David wrote this summary that we saw on the email today, the one that's on the screen, or who? Someone, so, someone from the law office trying so, to summarize what's happening. Is that my um, understanding? These findings of fact and decision were written by uh, David Cowan and um, I'm sorry, is it Ben Plant? Ben? Yep. Yes. Um, so this latest round, as I understand it, uh, is specific to an abatement request um, for the, I'm sorry. I've got so many papers here. Well, this Sorry, Marjorie, if it's helpful, I can step in and summarize sure. briefly. Sure. Um, and so uh, I know I've met with um, various iterations of the board at various times because this has been going on for quite some time. Um, but this, I think people are generally familiar with the Hurricane Island Foundation asking um, for tax exempt status. Uh, and it's become. Yep, and so we had discussions on on the current pending um, proceedings, and there are some before the State Board of Property Tax Review, and there was another that was decided by the Superior Court and that we just filed a brief in front of the law court on. And the issues are all interrelated in front of the State Board. So they originally came to the town before and asked essentially for this abatement request. Um, and then the statute provides if the select board take no action in a certain time period, it's deemed denied. So there were meetings that were happening then uh, and while those discussions were ongoing and there were some potential settlement discussions, that time period expired and they filed an appeal to the state board. And the state board pointed out that, um, so they asked for three years, 2017, 2018 and 2019, that under the statute, the timing was wrong for the 2019 one. So that's the request that they're making here. Um, and in the interim, the Superior Court decision came out in um, uh, kind of a final decision that modified your assessor's decision. Uh, and that is up on appeal. So um, while it's on appeal, there are some rules that prevent it from uh, it's called what's called a stay of execution. So while it's on appeal, the law is clear that Wes's originally original unmodified decision still stands until the um, uh, until a final decision by the court. And the the central issue here is that in addition to being a tax exempt literary and scientific organization or literary or scientific organization, um, you also have to own the property. And that has been one of the central issues for the town and every other 
um, discussion we've had on the matter. And so these are drafted as proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law, and it's your decision to make. So you guys can direct any changes you want. But essentially what we did here is we just outline, outline the procedural background and said essentially um, uh, that um, the foundation doesn't own the property. It's split into two decisions because the way these are assessed is one assessment goes to the, um, the Gaston Families Hurricane Island Trust and the foundation appears to be asking for an abatement of those taxes as well as the taxes that go to them. And so we split it in two decisions because um, there are kind of additional reasons why asking on behalf of someone else is problematic. So uh, the request, this latest request for an abatement came on July 8th. So is there a time limit on the selectmen answering? Is that the 60 days? Yeah, so if the selectmen take no action within 60 days, then it's deemed denied. Um, and they can appeal um, to one place or the other. Um, the reason to issue the decisions in part rather than let it just be deemed denied is because it's, it's kind of tricky where do you appeal and the just helping to figure out the statutes when the state board or the Knox County commissioners get the appeal. Um, I think having the procedural background spelled out for them uh, would be helpful. But you have to, if you don't act within 60 days, which is I think just after Labor Day, it's just deemed denied without any reason, uh, unless you go to the taxpayer and ask for um, additional time. Um, but the only reason that would make sense to agree to that or to go to the taxpayer to agree to that is if there was, if the select board thought it was likely they were going to come out differently, I think. I have a couple more questions. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So um, I, I tried to go back and read as much as I could about this case. Um, I guess I'm just asking, since this has been going on since 2019, I mean, what is, what is the town's gain? You know, the money received as opposed to the money spent. Um, why should we keep proceeding with this in terms of the, you know, the expense involved? Are you talking to David? Yes. So so certainly uh, the town at any point can decide to, uh, to stop um, proceeding. Um, I think, you know, the town decided to appeal to the law court um, and those briefs are already filed. So, um, you know, the only thing remaining there is the oral argument when that gets scheduled, which will be pretty short and that it's probably worth regardless issuing these decisions to kind of preserve that issue so um, the to wait so till it comes down. So the board of selectmen did vote to go to the law court? Okay, mm -hmm. you did do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. I so I'm just trying to catch up a little bit. Uh, and then uh, Wes Robinson is here. We were talking today and we had a question about going forward since Superior Court now says their ruling is that it is a, a literary or scientific entity or whatever the proper term is there, then how do we assess it for the current year? Do we assess just the buildings um, or just the employee housing? I mean, what do we do for 2023? The, the commitment that we're doing right now based because of the uh, Superior Court decision? Um, so I can't tell which way you're looking. So I'm gonna assume you're addressing that question to me again. Oh, I'm Mark, sorry. I don't know, I don't know that, where to look. That's all right. <laughs> well, I can, um, I can remember us talking about this, the settlement and saying that we thought the only things that they were entitled to an abatement on if they were the scientific and literary were the buildings that they use for the right. thing, which is what Wes has been billing them 
billing them for minus the employee housing before. So I would assume that would be our stance still is that if they judge said they are a scientific organization that they're probably that 650-ish, is that still the number of thousand? I think that's what I read of the assessed buildings. I don't know what the tax on that is. 8,000 would still be, I would assume that would be tax exempt for this year since they told us it was, but that was just my understanding from how we've been dealing with it in the past. I don't um, know. Yeah, so it, the statute allows the, um, the municipality to assess against either the owner or the party in possession. And the town's past practice has been to assess the buildings to the foundation as the party in possession and everything else to the owner. The town could continue to do that. If they were to do that, um, then uh, the then or the town could also assess everything to the owner. That would seem to be lawful under the statute. Um, the, I think the, the, the issue about how to treat the, um, the superior court decision when it's on appeal um, is a little bit more complicated. It's actually spelled out a little bit and briefly in a paragraph in each of these decisions, if you scroll down. And there's a rule that essentially when you file an appeal um, of a superior court decision as the town has done, then there's a stay on the execution of that decision. And so that means it is essentially that no one can enforce it. And when, as here, there's kind of a, there's the executive, the, you know, the, um, the tax assessor and the executive branch issue makes a decision, the lower court um, modifies that decision. And then the lower court's um, decision is put on hold during the appeal, then because of separation of powers issues, essentially the, the executive's decision, which is the assessor, uh, remains unmodified during the pendency of the appeal. So the town, I think, could, they, you've got three choices, proceed as you've always done, um, assess everything to the owner, uh, or assess uh, or don't assess treat the buildings as exempt. You could do any of those three things that, that um, you chose to do lawfully under the statute, I think. So, Why would we even consider uh, not to the owner? Because if you, you buy a good piece of property, you lease it, the owner still pays the taxes. Why would this be any different? Well, yeah, I mean, that is the... That's the central argument that the town's making on appeal. I mean... So, the you know at root the issue for tax exempt properties has to be owned by the tax exempt entity and it has to be used exclusively for tax exempt purposes and it's pretty easy to just say this property is owned by a private landowner and it's used to generate rental income and why do you treat that differently than anywhere else in the town so that's the argument we're making to the law court on behalf of the town and it would be consistent for you guys to keep doing that Right. Okay. So, any more questions, Marvin? Yes. No. And Wes, and what? David, if Wes now thinks that they're scientific, you know, would that change anything? I mean, I don't think he's changed his opinion, but. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it is Wes's decision in the first instance. Um, the the discussion and all of Wes's other decisions were essentially, even if they're scientific they don't own it and oh, that's exactly. the issue that the law court has to decide um so it's you know if the law court decides that issue against us and we've assessed the taxes i think that it's pretty likely that for anything from 2019 going forward um you you might need to refund that in that you're likely to have to refund that in that situation and so if that changes the way the town kind of budget is budgets or keeps that money um then that is a consideration. Um, but again, the, we filed the briefs. This shouldn't be a super long, complicated issue. So I suspect we will have a decision from the law court within the 185 day abatement period. 
and the um, and then there's also a three year provision that allows the selectman to go back and fix things if it turns out you're wrong in front of the law court. Wes, do you have anything you want to add? No, not actually. Okay, all right. So um, my question is, what is so? What do we um, you know we need to approve? So the motion would be to approve and sign the findings of fact and decision for Hurricane Island Foundation tax accounts 582 and 777. Okay. So moved. Second. Do I have a second? Oh, yeah, second. second. All in favor? Well, I thought you were second. I thought you were it. seconding it. Yeah, no, we're... I said oh. second. <laughs> no. I know, I should have said just second, Question. but anyway. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I'm sorry. All right, so that's the vote. Was the vote? Did you already vote? The, yes. yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're moving forward. Okay. Great. Oh, you have to sign these. Is, is we, that it, David? Who has to sign? We all done? All of you. Everything? You're all done with me. I just had a, I thought okay, just had great. A Thank you very much for your time. I, Thanks. Have, have a good night, everyone. Yeah, you too. Here. Okay. Uh, I thought that would be okay. All righty. So. Is there two copies? Do you um, obviously. The names of. Yeah, I see my name. <laughs> There's this one. Okay. And I assume your name must have gotten dropped to the second page on this one. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. This page goes with the that. Oh, this too. We have a meeting for us. So yeah. When it gets to things, we'll just have to flip it back. Okay. So, how many more days you got left now, Wes? <laughs> <laughs> Open ended. Well, we appreciate you staying on so we can oh, okay. sort sort well, your uh, position out. Here, here, but your name is oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I was we heard it. We heard it was through the uh, what do you call it? Makes the, sense <laughs> when you send out the taxes. Commitment. Commitment. Tax yeah. commitment. And the uh, and the MZI. Well, we appreciate you your willingness to help us out. All right, moving on. Um, committee and department reports and appointments. 7A, appoint public information officer. Um, that has to do with the Freedom of Information Act, and we don't have one. Um, Would it be someone? Uh, it just, it's just me. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I thought you were, I didn't know. I make a motion we appoint Marjorie Stratton as our public information officer. Second. So, <laughs> All in favor? Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> I thought we were putting it up there. I didn't know that it was going to be you. That's why I was getting ready to ask your question. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's fine. We should have put that on, put on the agenda. Um, B, 7B, library trustee resignation, Maggie Olson. I'll make a motion we accept our resignation. Second. All in favor? Um, we don't have the status report, correct? I don't have anything. Okay. So 7C is... I did meet with Millie. them on the 19th, mm -hmm. and I did get um, updated um, plans for the transfer station, so they're moving forward. Uh, we discovered that we don't have a um, DEP license for the transfer station. I don't know why, but we'll have to go through that process. How rigorous is that? I don't know. <laughs> you would think that we would. I know. I don't would understand. Cap the landfill that there would have been some kind of permit given. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It seems like a major oversight. Yeah. 
the, the landfill is licensed, right? It's just the transfer station that is not. What did you say? The landfill is licensed. Oh, yeah, the landfill closure. That's right, but we I have just, that affidavit. Right, but I just assumed that after they capped it that we would have had the permit to put right. what's up there up exactly. there. The transfer station. I mean, that was before you were telling me it was the first time exactly. that happened when I was in kid in high school, maybe. I can't remember. It was in the 90s, at least. So. Exactly. I just can't believe that we don't have one. <laughs> okay. Any more comments on that? No. Um, well, hopefully everything will be fine. I don't know what they would expect us to do. So, <laughs> so um, Millie, Director of Public Works. Well, hello there. Hello. <laughs> um, well, funny thing happened last week. The line painters called and said, hey, we were thinking we might come out Thursday, this Thursday and paint your lines on your roads. <laughs> okay. Wow. So that's so, good thing. Yeah, I, I did tell them to omit um, parking spaces for the parking lot and uh, Main Street, um, which he kind of wanted to do anyway, but um, where that project's coming up in the spring, Right. Uh, I, I don't see any need to spend the money to paint it. Um, so as far as I know, he's coming out either this Thursday or next Thursday, but uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from him. He told me he would um, call me. And if he doesn't call me by tomorrow morning, I will call him. Millie, will they still do the crosswalks though? Um, um, pretty much all of the crosswalks that I think we need are done. Oh, they are. Okay. Yep. We we've done those. Well, um, you guys can do them anyway. Yeah, and we and we we've okay. been doing them. Um, I had them do the school uh, the other day uh, last week, and I also had them weed whack all the way up to the school um, today to make sure that that's all clear for the kids to start school on Tuesday. Not that I'm excited about that or anything. <laughs> no none of you mothers and fathers are. no 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 <laughs> um uh let's see um the mower which i think we've got pictures but they appear to be sideways um i he sent pictures of the mower his final price was seventeen thousand five hundred so um i just wanted to come back to you guys because i thought it was going to be 16. um he is willing to deliver the mower out here and do training with uh, training with us on how to operate it how to take it apart put it together and all of that um, that's included in the 17 thousand yes mower price? yes okay. I just want to make sure that wasn't yeah he there. said he would he would spend the day following one of us around as well um you know why we're mowing to make sure there's no issues or any questions that we might have um so uh i guess at this point i just want a green light from you folks if that's something you're still interested in doing um i know uh funds are tight um you know marjorie and i have looked at the budget i don't know marjorie if you want to chime in um yeah so it's so early in the year i mean this is the end of august so this is only the second month of our budget cycle but um there is in the operating account there is ten thousand dollars under equipment um and then we have the about almost three thousand dollars that we would have paid him for mowing so that's 13 you know, you, there's no other place to take it other than out of operating. What about when we sell the dump truck? Is that what was that going to be? Was that three? Um, that that for trade in value that was thirty four. Included in okay, but that was um, that's, included in that. That's not in there. No, um, the sale of the dump truck. Uh, we haven't come to that yet. Um, I don't know. I mean, the trade in value versus what we can sell it for outright. Um, I do have somebody that's interested in buying it, um, but I think we need to talk about that price. 
Um, also, there, I don't know if we, um, there is going to be a little bit of money left, um, I believe, in the payroll budget for, for us where we're not getting a foreman. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I would want Marjorie's stamp of approval on that one um, to take the remainder of the money needed for the mower out of that. And then. Yeah, well, what we vote at town meeting is that bottom line figure. I mean, we try to stick to the line items as much as possible as a guide, but the bottom line is what's voted at town meeting. Yeah, it doesn't all have to be used for whatever it says. Correct. Correct. Right. I have a, I do have one quick question. I mean, sure. it looks like it's been kept in good shape. Who who does the maintenance on the hydraulics and the engine? Does he do it himself? Does he take it to he Union does Farm? he does a lot of it and Union Farm does the rest. Did you talk to them about what kind of shape stuff's in? I mean, just to get a secondhand opinion for no, sure I you're... no, I did not. I mean, it look it looks like it's in good shape from the outside. I, I think it is, and anytime there's anything, he's pretty meticulous about it. Um, and um, there is a bearing or something that has that had to be replaced, and you know he was right on it. He could have operated it, but he didn't want to, you know, until everything was fixed. You know, and uh, a lot of a lot of it's new parts. You know, it's, it's been rebuilt over the years to almost a new machine. What's the reason he wants to sell? To sell. No. For him? Yes. Why does he want to sell? Um, he has some uh, cardiac problems and is having a hard time um, doing. He has to, his doctor said he has to slow down. He has a regular job, um, plus he mows on the weekends and he just wants to give up the mowing. I think we should go ahead and, I mean, it's only going to take. Five years to sort of pay it back is I'm assuming it will last longer than that. I hope so. Yeah, I think yeah. we should take the opportunity. I mean, I don't I know how much a new rig, all that equipment will cost to you, Millie. Um, I know uh, I know it's um probably the sickle itself would be close to 20. Wow, yeah. You know, not think... count not counting the tractor brand new and and he has taken very good care of it. You can tell by the pictures as well. Um, but, uh, you know, to be able to mow more than once a year would be quite helpful as well. Mm -hmm. And it comes with delivery to the island and a and, lesson. And, and, and teaching, so, yeah, lessons. So. I mean, I, I'd say I make a motion that if the money's in the budget that we should purchase the uh, tractor motion to approve purchase of roadside mow mowing equipment from who is it jamie, jamie oliver yes what is it jamie oliver second wait uh for oh. seventeen thousand five hundred. yep i'm sorry yes no, yeah, we should put the price in there. So to repeat the motion, motion uh, move to approve the purchase of roadside mowing equipment from Jamie Oliver for seventeen thousand five hundred. Yeah, that sounds like my motion. <laughs> that sounds exactly like Jake said. <laughs> Just like Jake. I second that motion. All in favor? Excellent. Great. I'm sorry to be slow, but it, it should be. No, it should be. Um, do you know when he's going to bring that out? Um, I told him I would call him or text him tomorrow morning and let him know our final decision. And then he said he'd make a plan to get it out here. I would expect within the next week or so. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Oh. No, go ahead, Millie. Um, Let's see, what else do I have? Um, I think that's, I think that's really it. Um, like I said, we've been focusing on, I, I did have them, Renee Jones agreed to take that small pear tree down that was right up against the road um, on our Cola Lane. So that is gone prior, you know, before school starts. We took that down this morning. Um, I think so as far as I can see school is close to ready 
I'm not sure if the sign works for the crossing, but I don't think it has for a while. It does. It does. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to, I was going to have that tested before, before school started just to make sure it was set. Um, yeah, Tucker, Tucker just pushed the button day before yesterday. Good. I was to my house from daycare. <laughs> good. Remind me to give him a buck. Okay, I will. <laughs> for for being our tester. Yes, I yes. will tell him he's the tester. Um, you know, so, yep, go ahead. The last meeting we discussed about other trees overhanging. We had the discussion whether what was proper procedure. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that you will find them. I don't know if anybody's looked it up yet. That I have. It is, illegal to, is it illegal in the state of Maine to have trees overhanging where they're an obstacle to traffic? Um, we cannot touch trees that are um, any kind of shrubs or decorative trees and plants, and we cannot touch anybody's tree who um, uses it as a shading tree. Even if it overhangs and even if it traffic. overhangs, yep. I'm not sure now if the if the uh, electric company has more more pull than we do. Um, if it's near wires or something, but. Um, we, if people do not agree to do it, we can't touch it. Well, the only thing that we can touch is if we're in a ditch line or working in a ditch line, um, we can clear that ditch. So if someone has a tree that's blocking traffic in a road, we cannot touch it. Not according to... Uh, that does well, not make sense. If it's blocking traffic, of well, course. I know, if it's but, in the if it's fallen over in the road and blocking yes, traffic, that's yes, that's a different yes, story. That's a different. I'm story. assuming you mean you can't take the tree down, but you must be able to trim it back. Wait a minute, exactly. Uh, Next question. Well, the way Marjorie read it to us last week was almost verbatim how it says it in the book. I still would question that with the town attorney. It does not make sense. So it's a tree that's overhanging. Well, they can overhang, but they can't interfere with traffic where you, in fact, would well, hit, hit it with your car if you went by it and you were on the road. Oh, but it also goes to ornamental trees. Yes, I'd question that one seriously. It doesn't that does not make sense. Well, it, I mean, uh, that's how I read it in the book. It's that's... Has anyone asked the homeowner or the, the property owner? Of which one? There's several. Well, any of them, I guess. I mean, um, there asked. a few have been okay with it, which is why they've been trimmed back. Many are not, um, which is, you know, that's the problem. Well, is it, are we talking about a specific tree? I'm, let's, I'm, let's just, we don't need to talk about the specific okay. tree. Is there, okay. is there a regulation that says that if you're driving down the road and there's a limb out over the road and it's going to hit your car and you're still in the lane, does the town well, have that's the an up? obstruction? Yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. An obstruction. Yes, if it's if it's within the town way and obstructs passage, yes, I would say that in that case, wouldn't you, Millie? I would, um, but. It, You've got to That's like find, a tree. You do have a fine line on that obstruction, though. Yeah. <laughs> what you know? What constitutes? Well, let me give the... you an example. The other uh, when I was town manager previously, uh, if you go up High Street and then you start around the curve to the left, and there's that hill. You know where I am. Mm -hmm. There was a birch tree that was hanging down, it did not fall down, but it was hanging down into the road. So we thought as, you know, public works department that we were doing, a, you know, this property owner a favor by going and taking, it was like a little four inch birch tree, right? We took it down. Well, we got in trouble with this property owner because we took a tree that was not uh, it was on private property. So that's just one example of what happens and you can get yourself into trouble by just assuming that a property owner would want a branch or a tree or whatever it is taken down. That's not what we're talking about. So we're talking about not taking a tree down. We're talking about taking any 
projections from that tree that are interfering with traffic. But it's, it's well, basically I, the same thing because the tree was leaning in the road. They correct? Cut it off as it comes across so, the road. But it, it would be no different than if a branch was in leaning I guess, in the road. I guess if it was a specific tree that you're asking about, I mean, I, I don't know because I don't know what exactly you're asking about. So. I don't think it's very clear, actually. We're saying if a tree has a limb that's hanging over the road, and I drive down the road, and I'm going to hit that tree, and there's another car coming, and I can't pull over. Do I have to stop because that homeowner won't let us cut the branches that are overhanging? We're not talking about cutting the tree. We're I talking about know. cutting the, the overhang. I don't know. I'd have to see the specific situation before uh, I would say anything about I, it. Yeah. I think, I think the un unfortunate thing, Don, is, is uh, every one of them is going to be a different situation. So... Uh, maybe it would be uh, good next week if you and I could get together and you could show me a couple of these places um, and then we can discuss it and maybe I, and I can pop, I can talk to homeowners and see what we can do or what we can't do. I think Probably that way is to discuss it with the homeowner first. I'm not in a disagreement with that, but I do think we ought to understand the law and if, that, if anything, it might be a question for someone's attorney. I don't think we're understanding the law right now. Millie, did you happen to go up into the quarry, Lawson's quarry, and look at that tree that we tried to say? They took it down. Oh, they did. Okay, good. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I just, I was afraid it would fall on. No, on. no, I had that taken down by uh, end of June, I think. End of June? Maybe July. I don't know. That's yeah, I can't. Fun. It doesn't matter. I just want to. It's make gone sure though. I do know that. I didn't want it to fall onto a car or something. No, it... no, we took it down. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Didn't seem to like the way you tried to <laughs> resurrect but, it. But Don, back to that too. Um, you know, uh, if you want to meet with Marjorie and I, we can look at the book and, um, and. You know, you can read the okay. uh, section and and uh, we can go from there, maybe make a plan. Okay. If that would work for you, um, yeah. just let Marjorie know uh, when you can meet and I'll make sure that I'm there. I just can't do it the rest of this week. It would have to be first of next week. I'm closing my house uh, on Wednesday, next Wednesday, so I'm, got to talk, I'm tied up till after that's done. Okay. Yep. Let's on. Any more from I'm Millie? Good. I'm good. Okay, great. Thanks, Millie. Thank, Thank you, you. See ya. See ya. Um, new business. Uh, downtown. Oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. Downtown project update. Okay, so exciting or not so exciting, but things uh, slowly moving along. Uh, one of the I don't want to call it an obstacle, but one of the things we're encountering is um, the difficulty of the environmental review process, which has uh, changed for Northern Borders Regional Commission and BRC. So I'm working with uh, someone with Wood from Woodard and Kern and with the consultant from MBRC directly um, to try to conclude that process. Um, we have to put out another. Um, public, uh, forgive me, I'm not coming up with the, the correct language. There's another public review period, which we, we put one out for EDA, the EDA components in 2020. Um, so this is another thing that we have to put out, which is basically like an ad and some papers that invite people to review the scope of the project, um, assessing the project from an environmental perspective and what the conclusions are. And it gives people an opportunity to comment. And it's just a federal requirement that we do this. So um, that has to get done. Um, so we're, we're trying to move forward as quickly as possible with that. Um, it does impact our notice to proceed, which is the documentation we need to get funding, like mm -hmm. actually be able to bill NBRC. Because um, it seems there's going to be a delay in that, we have asked for an extension on the notice to proceed just to be safe, because I think our deadline is the middle of September, mid to late September. 
So we've asked for an extension on that um, and we're just trying to move forward as quickly and efficiently as possible with that. But there are uh, timeframes that we have to comply with. So no, no matter how fast we are, we still have to wait 15 days for one thing, 30 days for another thing. So um, we're just trying to get that taken care of. Um, the designs and easements, um, all of that is moving forward. We need to have all the easements in place um, before we can move forward with submitting the designs, which once we submit the designs to EDA, then we can, once we get approval, then we can put the project out to bid. We're still trying to put the project out to bid as soon as possible. So we're just moving ahead as as quickly they as we can. must grant extensions though, don't they? For um, I mean, they know it's a government job and you have to help jump through hoops. I wouldn't think that they're going to. Yeah, no. And, and I think NBRC is really working with us. They've been really good and helpful and trying to make that work. I, I think with EDA, it, um, just with this change in our timeline, um, we just have to note it in our progress reports, which we have. And um, as long as you're within the start date for the you know, but it, you know, when you have to break ground and we're still, we're still fine with that. It's just making sure we're fine with all of the funding sources in terms of when we have to break ground. So um, yeah, and um, SHIP, you know, I don't think there's any uh, progress in terms of where we left off from the last update with the SHIP grant. Um, so the, I, the last we heard from Brent, was that um, there was supposed to be someone in place um, to administer that program by late August. Well, it's late August. So we we um, should be hearing something, but I meet with Brent tomorrow morning. So we'll follow up and see if uh, Woodard and Kern can reach out to them because that is something we do through Woodard and Kern, not directly. So um, trying to think of what else is um, highly relevant. Um, I think in terms of, of the business and property owners, people have been notified that we're not going to break ground this fall. We're breaking ground in the spring. We, we're starting our um, outreach with the business and property owners up again um, at the end of September. We're going to do a monthly call with them um, at the end of each month. And we I, I'm sort of holding off on a public mailing um, until we actually submit the final designs to EDA because I don't I don't want to uh, put something out that we then have to correct in terms of anything regarding the design or dates or anything. So holding off on that for the moment. Um, all of the materials we have up on the website are up to date and correct. So if anyone is looking for project information, um, it's all up on the downtown project page and that is accurate um, according to where we are on the timeline and um, budget. And uh, I think the only other thing with outreach is that we'll do one more uh, public meeting before the end of the year. Again, I'll try to time that around when we put out the mailing so people are notified about the public meeting and that will just be an informational meeting for people to understand more about the project, the timeline and to see the designs and to be able to ask questions. Um, we've done that in, uh, I would say frequently and um, with the stakeholders all along, um, but um, we've done, um, I think we've only done two, two actual broader pub public meetings with the community, so. This will be this would be our third um, public meeting in the community. So, um, still just yeah, just trudging along, trying to get all the ducks in a row so we can put the put everything out to bid and uh, be able to start um, invoicing, getting some money. It'd be nice to order pipe. Or I uh, yeah. <laughs> it's I I feel like uh, yeah, I'm sort of on the edge of my seat trying to. I know, it's trying to cutting it close. Yeah, it's a little nerve. It's a little nerve wracking, but well, it will all come together. Yep. Yep. Any more about that, Katie? No, unless unless people have questions. Okay. Thank you.
That's good. I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> it's too nerve wracking. <laughs> It's like, is this really going to happen? <laughs> it's just, yes, it will. And you know it's going to, but it's just. Yeah, someone asked me, well, it's funny because I saw Will today and he asked me um, how the project was going. <laughs> and um, I said, oh, it's going great. Um, someone asked me, um, what's the what's the hardest part of this project? I said, we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the easy part of this project right now. Yeah. Well, it'd be great to get started. So, all right. Um, new business. A tax acquired property, Hundley Map 30 lot 004. So, uh, this was a foreclosure that happened in March of 2020. Uh, I gave you a little map to kind of show you where it is. Uh, it's in the middle of a piece of property owned by Peter Warren. Um, let's see. It's that piece we, that the um, daycare, daycare wanted. wanted yeah. yeah, no, but the only thing I have about this is don't we always put these out for like a sealed bid like mm. every time we do it? It doesn't. Well, as I said here. I, I know I've okay. done it a couple times, but I just this, don't know. Yeah, it's a, it, certainly you can. Uh, I did put what was voted at town meeting uh, here in the second paragraph in Article 47. Yeah. It authorizes the Board of Selectmen on behalf of the town to dispose of real estate acquired by the town for non-payment of taxes on such terms and conditions as the board deemed advisable. But certainly if you want to do something different, you know, it allows you. I think if, if he wants it, I think we should sell it to him. What other? It, yeah. I, well, it does go it to the main seem, road, right? It wouldn't seem, yeah, it wouldn't seem likely to me that somebody else would want it. But then again, you know, if you have any local knowledge about it, it's valuable. It's up across from Seabrook Farm. Um, okay. That's the. Where the this is the State Beach Road right here. The cemetery right here, is. and then cemeteries over in this corner. So it'll be. I mean, it's almost right there. Okay, that's what I think. That's what I thought. Just I, I can see why Peter would want it, but I really wonder if, if we should. Be, well, well, I've noticed that it is up. There. I mean, if that was the case, the piece of property that was beside my house when I bid and lost the bid, then I had to buy it off the person that got it. Why couldn't I have just made an offer to the town to buy it? I mean, I didn't know that's how things work. Well, it would so. probably depend on how the vote went at town meeting that year, because I know from when I was here, it used to say that we had to post it for three weeks and then it went out to bid. It was a fairly and, and that was stated at town meeting in the town meeting vote that that's what the selectmen had to do. So I'm, I don't know how long ago it was, but what's the right thing to do? What is the. In my opinion, if I would vote to um, let it let Peter purchase the piece myself, but the, the value is what, and the price is what. Well, I guess my goal would just be to get it back on the tax rolls. I just think we should put it out to bid for however long we usually do it, because that's what how we usually do real estate but that's my mm -hmm. and I that's my only thing because we we've, we've always well not always but the last four or five years since i've been on here we always for any real estate we always put it out to a closed bid and then i mean we've done that on ambulances and stuff like that too so uh, that's just the way i thought we did things but i mean i could be persuaded either way we should be consistent with our actions and <clears throat> that and this right here would not appear to be consistent for me that's the only thing I'm worried about. But I, I would assume we'd bid twenty six hundred dollars at, at least again. So, well, I doubt if anybody's going to pay twenty seven thousand dollars for it. I doubt they will either. But I'm not sure that twenty six hundred is a real number either. It's fine. I make the most. What, what what is it like? A, do we have a meeting in two weeks? Is that too quick of a time frame to have a bid process or? The 13th is our next meeting, September 13th. 
and we could just well, say I, I can't get it in the wind this week so maybe so, we can just say by, by our october 4th we, meeting i don't know that's kind of what i want to do with it just to stay consistent with yep. what we've done in the past uh, by the october 4th, 4th meeting. Meeting. Right. we'll open the vids at the october 4th meeting mm -hmm. and yep. we'll uh, get it back on the past so patch roll. um Uh, so if advertise sale of property. I don't know what am I. What are you trying to say? Uh, yeah, we with the with the bid? bid. Yeah, through a sealed bid process. I mean, that's what we did before. Eric opened them all up, and we just took the highest bid. We yep, that's what we did. So. And if advertise the sale of the property with sealed bid process. And this is, this we'll just say map 30, lot four. And the bids have to be in by, um, isn't it usually Monday at close of business before? Or? Should be October 3rd, close yeah. business October 3rd. I think that's what we did before. It could have been Friday before. I'm just trying to, to remember how we um, did it before. It's better, I, well. Because you have to have a closing date because you can't have someone I mean, right, to, right. You just have to say we'll take bids up until October. About, we'll up. take bids through September 30th and then we'll open them on the 4th. Yeah, that sounds perfect. I just want to stay consistent with what we do. And I know we've always had a couple days between when the close and when we open it. Do we need to vote on that? Um, yeah. Oh. So what I have is uh, move I want to. I'm gonna slide over here and I can just read it. Oh sure. If it, if it seems like a good motion for you, then. It's kind of mission issue. Move to advertise sale of property on map thirty lot four with sealed bid process. The bids need to be in by September thirtieth at the close of business, and we'll open them at our select board meeting October fourth. That's my motion. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? <laughs> Wastewater budget. Well, I've been looking at this. Uh, budget uh, and what I'm proposing is is some increases. Sorry, I can put this apart. The fixed fee uh, for debt service and capital improvements is forty five dollars per quarter. I'm suggesting that in order to um, collect the amount that we need, we should raise that to sixty three dollars per quarter, the fixed charge, uh, the other fixed charge for operating and maintenance should be increased from 76 to 77. And then also the um, charge for uh, the water charge per cubic foot. Um, it's just based on the amount of money that we're gonna need for operations and in terms of the capital reserve, we need to keep putting plenty of money in there because there are so many improvements that need to be done both at the plant and in the collection system and in the um, pump stations. Uh, the pump stations I've been told, and I may not be using the right language, uh, have obsolete some obsolete equipment in them and they have to be upgraded. We're trying to do at least one a year, but it costs 12,500 each year. Would um, it be better to do more than one a year? Would you get the economy of scale if you did three or four? Would it be well, 30,000 instead of, you know? Yeah, I, I, well, even with one, in the equipment budget and adding more money to the capital reserve. Um, so I, uh, maybe I'm not understanding your question. Are you saying that we should increase the rates even more and raise more money? Oh, no, I was just okay. curious, like if anyone's ever asked, like 
you know, if we borrowed the money, if it would be mm -hmm. cheaper to do all of the pump stations at once, if they're all obsolete. I mean, if someone's going to come out once a year to do one pump station and we have 10, it's going to cost 125,000 mm -hmm. to do them all. If we did all 10 at once, would it cost, would we save, would we save that much money if we, that's all I'm asking. So. Mm -hmm. I must profess that um, I would need to consult with Mike Cummins from uh, Maine Water on details of that you know, what would be the best course of action? I mean, I don't know how hard it is to get people out here to do that kind of work either. Well, so. main water, I think main water would deal with that. I think what um, Mike Ames and Mike Cummins said was that Will did the re the replacement of the one that we did this okay, year. Okay, so it's just buying well, the parts then. A Maybe. lot of the maintenance and whatnot between Dwyer's and Will are the, mm -hmm. are the main, main water employee would be doing the most of the work okay i didn't I, I mean i don't know anything i'm just asking if i mean right. if one needs to be changed every year if, but if they're doing it on their own yeah there's no gain there. right no so that makes sense to do spread it out that's a, it was just a question I, I like i said i'm not i don't know who's doing the work and, but a lot of times if you have to have different crew come out right yeah. that's all well as you can see the um Operating costs, paying main water has gone up. Um, and I've also added that 12,500 to upgrade one of the pump stations. Um, you you were talking about, did you want to change the volumetric chart from $8 to something? To nine. Okay, you never, I don't believe you oh, ever I'm said sorry. that. You I'm got sorry. talking about that, but didn't say a change. So that would, um, budget-wise, theoretically give us the three hundred ninety-one thousand three hundred, and the expense side is three ninety-two, seven sixty-five. So, and this forty-seven is that what's in fund balance? No, that's just the increase. Okay. That's the in, I'm sorry. So that's the thirteen point eight percent. But we have the other roughly. Fifteen hundred dollars to make up for the difference in the expenses being right. This there. is just a you know. So that I, for, the forty-seven to five at the bottom is the, okay. That's the fund balance. That's the amount of the increase in the from last year to this year. It's a thirteen point eight increase in expenses. So budget-wise, the expenses are slightly over the revenue. So bottom line, you just want to increase the water and rates enough to meet. pretty much break even. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that should be a simple rate increase on per unit sold? So each user, uh, most uh, properties are one user, but for instance, the hotel or the um, some apartment buildings. Some Say we just talked about this up a lot. We changed like one from two to one and one from one to two. Right. Yeah, depending right. on it's different. We just, that's um, what the debt charge is, that fixed rate. So there's two fixed charges, right? So that would be Instead of forty-five dollars per user per quarter, it would be sixty-three, and then the other fixed charge, which is currently seventy-six, would be seventy-seven, and then the volumetric charge would go from eight to nine dollars, and that would help to cover the thirteen point eight percent increase in expenses. Correct. Right. Yeah. I don't remember the last time there was an increase. Do you have any? Two thousand nine, I think. So it'd be seventy six dollars a month just in the fixed seventy six dollars a year just in the two fixed costs if it's quarterly. It's a quarter, right? So Each I did quarter seventy six dollars, and then the right. nine dollars is just on how much you use. So I mean, correct that's the value, right? So you don't know, but it's gonna go up. Everyone's bill, if they're a single payer, would go up by seventy six dollars a year. But it seems like that's kind of what has to happen to make the budget work. To me, it's kind of well, since we haven't had a rate increase in. Oh, 12 years. Seems like a simple rate increase should do it. Um, that the 
other ordinances that I don't know if you read through them that Abby sent from all the towns, they rate have a rate increase every year. Hmm. Keep up with their yeah, but it's probably not budget. it's probably more like a dollar or two, not like the eighteen dollars on this one. Well, like if we've I mean, been raising we it, haven't by, done it right. Ever. If we've done a dollar a year, it would be basically another Nobody, dollar a year because it's been right. 15 years. So, right. so I mean, I don't think I it's, don't think this is unreasonable. It would be easy, it's easier to Spend easier it. to yes. If we do just yeah, a in the future, easier. we should be cognizant of maybe well up. I think there was some, yeah. I don't think it that's we weren't cognizant, it just kind of didn't happen. So we need to make a motion or just accept what you've got. I'm us trying to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Um, yeah, you need to make a motion to approve the wastewater budget and the rate increase as um, presented. Um, I probably should have typed up a motion. So I make oh, a motion okay, that, that we easy. that we approve the wastewater budget with the amended user fee increases. Second. Okay. User. Why don't you just do the rate increase? That's what I would wonder. Why are we just doing do the it? rate increase? Yeah, why not? That'd be keep fine. it simple. I'm sorry. Just what? just instead of naming each thing, just say with a rate increase. Don't have to. What did what did you say? I thought that's what he said. That's what I thought. Oh, I, I thought, thought you I said. Thought I thought you said <laughs> fixed charge. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Rather than a fixed charge change, just go ahead and change the, the volume rate. Okay, Margie, yeah. can you read what what? I thought that's what I was doing. Office, what she said to me. So I missed, um, I missed. I missed it. You just changed. Um, so okay, nice. let's let Margie read. Well, so the increase, the rate change that I'm proposing is there's the debt service and capital project fixed charge that's going from 45 to 63 per quarter right the other fixed charge is currently 76 dollars per quarter that would be 77 per quarter and the volumetric charge would be nine dollars instead of eight dollars per cubic foot but I, I was curious what you had written down so far for the motion you had started oh, to write sorry. the motion. No, that's fine. Um, uh, motion to approve uh, the rate increase and budget for the wastewater, but I, I okay. didn't. I did. It wasn't a clear motion. Okay. So, uh, do you want Jake to list each no. debt service fixed charge and volumetric charge, or just the, the rate, rate increase? I was just going to do with one. Rate you know, that's what I thought I did. But... I, that's, I thought you did that too. That makes sense. I thought that's what I said, but okay. I could have been wrong. I make a motion that we approve the wastewater department budget with the rate increases. Second. All in favor? Review town office building use policy. Um, I, I put this together because you asked me to, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. What's wrong? There was no, there was no, the only question I had was about insurance. Well, like, did you yeah. find out? I mean, because with this, we were releasing ourselves from liability. Right on the back, it says we're not liable for any injuries. I, I read it somewhere. Right. right. So I mean, I would think that would cover our insurance thing. So. And some people will have insurance already. Right. But I just didn't want someone coming in here and slipping and falling down the stairs and saying, "Oh, you know." I mean, if they break, if the stairs break because they're old, that's one thing. But right. So the only thing we have to do is set up our hour yeah, cost. I didn't know it? how much you wanted to charge people. And, I, you know, I have mixed feelings about it because it's going to have to be managed and I don't want another thing to do. And even nonprofits would have to pay? No, no, no. no it's it's, just, the it's just that second. Oh, oh, oh. On the second page. Okay. Oh, I, I mean, see. what does it work out? What does it work out to that we charge Dr. Karen? 
down there. But I don't yeah, know what it is. Yeah, we should be. It was 75. Oh, but we wow. went up to 75, right? It was per 60, day. and then they went to 75. Is it 75 per day? It's per his visit, per month. He's here every single one. He's here like every three weeks. So, so, it's, so once, it's a month. Yeah, $75. So I'd say that's what, seven hours. So we're charging like a little over $10 an hour. I just want to be consistent on what we charge. That's why I was asking. We can't say, oh, we're going to charge $50 for this room and let him get away with that's all. That's right. all I was asking. No, no, no. I, I understand what you're saying. But if Marjorie doesn't, I'm going to have to deal with it. I don't know. Look, there's nothing I'd like better than to walk upstairs and have an exercise class. But <laughs> On the other hand, it's who else is going to come forward? I mean, we had Dr. Karen at one point wanted to be here. And, you know. Um, well, as it says, um, as long as it's not interfering, interfering like yeah. and you said, you didn't, nobody's going to want to have dogs and cats. And, you know, yeah. that's going to be. I guess the I, disruptive. To say the least. But Don't that's a, that's what the subjective part of it is. What does interfere and what doesn't interfere yeah. with the thing. That's kind of what you're getting at, isn't it? You don't want to have to be the judge of saying no. Well, to... And also just managing the calendar. Oh, you want it this day. You want it this right. day. And it's like, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Can we so. just try it? Can we, can we just, can we just adopt the policy for, sure. for like for one year? And revisit it in a year and if there's been no issues we can just say let's keep it going or you just sure. want to adopt it i don't know a lot of the things that the state government does have sunsets on them i don't care whatever you want to do it's fine with me <laughs> need a motion uh what was the amount you wanted 75 dollars a month 75 i thought it was a day no no it's at the top it's going to be per hour so why not just say $15? Oh, you're yeah, right, right. Because Dr. Karen does $75 a, 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 a visit. But visit. he's here once a month, or say, basically. Yes. Yeah, $15 an hour seems reasonable, doesn't it? I mean, yes. That probably, that's how much someone charges to probably clean it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. they got to clean it themselves. But I would, that would be what I was suggesting, making it at $15 an hour for now. But it can always yeah. be revisited at some point in the future when. Fifteen dollars an hour. I think that's fine. Yeah. yeah. That that would be my suggestion. I don't know. If there were. No comments from anybody else. So I'll make a motion that we approve this. What is it called? Policies. Policies governing non-government entity use of the office building at a rate of fifteen dollars per hour. Second. All in favor. And certainly, if it becomes an issue, it yes. can be. Let us know. Yeah. It can be rescinded just as easily as right. it was put up there. But um, we do. We did need to have something like this on the books before we let people in there. Oh I'm yeah, I'm glad we agreed to it. Agree. Okay. Um, report of town manager. So I did hear from. Um, Jake kind of prompted me today. And well, I, what got me thinking about that was that new homestead for 65 and how the assessor was saying how much of a nightmare it was for the 10 year and this and that. So I was reading that story in the poll tape and I got thinking, oh, what what happened to, and I got his name wrong. I apologize, but Travis was, it is Travis, right? Travis and I, cool. Yeah. I just wondered if oh, he's yeah. back from his vacation. So, so. so he said that, you know, he's willing to come out. Tuesday, unfortunately, is when he usually has planning board meetings. He's a, a code officer in a in another town, and uh, but he's still he's willing to come out on a Tuesday if that's the day that you want. Uh, so he asked just that you know that the, well, I mean, if what you, day would you like him to come if out? If he wants to come out and review our stuff and then meet with us by Zoom on a Tuesday or something, we don't actually have to meet with him in person, do we? No, not if he we, wants to Zoom. No, but he, he but, wanted to come out and look at, because right. we wanted some information that he couldn't give us until he looked at our books and stuff. You know, the, He wants so, to come see what? I mean, just tell him to come right. at his earliest convenience, and then we'll try and work a Zoom meeting in. And if he happens to come out on a Tuesday when we're 
going to have a meeting, we'll meet with them in person. But I think Zoom meetings are probably just as good as in person meetings at this point in time. But we wanted, we also wanted to know like what his wage requirements were. Right, but he, it, but he didn't, right. he didn't know how many hours a week he thought it was going to take until he looked at some stuff about how much we had done and what programs we had, right? Right, he had questions. Right. He said he wasn't ready to, to put a salary out there because he had questions. About yeah. what okay. else? So the we, need to, we need to get him out here to look at stuff. Well, right. We're done? Sure. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'll set something up then. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I did uh, email Sheriff Polkey, and he's very open to having a meeting. He was supposed to get back with me to me with available dates, but I haven't heard from him, so I really need to follow up. Uh, but the other thing that happened with the apartment is uh, patients called me about having more people there and more use of the apartment, because I guess all 14 deputies will be rotating out. She hasn't brought it in yet, but she's suggesting an uh, increase in the rent to $12.50 instead of $9.50. But I don't have her proposed new lease yet. But it's not, I mean, it's only one person at a time, except for the dog thing. That's the only thing that really changes it, anything. Yeah, it's the same. Then it's cops. Same time. Right. Same I mean, time. I can, yeah. I mean, yes, she wants to get more money, but. I mean, it's not any any more people in there at one time unless they're bringing their families out or something, are they? I, mean, I don't believe so. She didn't say that. It was only... Does she... I'm sorry. That means... No, go ahead. Did she... Does she clean? Does she, was there some issue like maybe she has to clean? Does she feel the need to that she has to clean in between? Is that... I mean, no. I don't know how she runs her place, so... Well, no. I mean, we don't really have a lot of options on where we can rent in town where we want the cop to be, so we kind of, I mean. And 12.50 is not an unreasonable sum. No, but it's not any more activity besides the dog that I don't see. But that's but fine. There'll, there'll just be one person there all the time instead of three days off or whatever, right? Does, is this, does this mean? No, we still have the four, just four the days 40, coverage. But now we have 14 different people that are going to rotate coverage okay i get it so it's still just one person one with a dog so the deputy dog <laughs> i didn't know what I to don't... call it <laughs> but that sounds stupid i thought no, you might have a laugh I'm thinking, of it. I'm thinking of the uh cartoon deputy yeah. deputy dog the canine <laughs> the canine <laughs> the um oh. anyway the, yeah, no, the dog is that a just a is that a pet or is it like a it's a well they drug canine, 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 canine dog? I'm assuming it's a dog a police it's a, dog. I didn't police know that dog. yeah okay that's police a good dog. that's a good thing yeah. yeah so I I mean I can see the rent going up when you have an animal in there too because, I, can't yeah. Yeah, because right. I mean but it's something that's that well trained you wouldn't think would stave anything up but well one you know, thing is and everything else that you're dealing with and accidents yeah, the the lease said no pets, but the deputy that had the dog said, well, it's not a pet, it's a deputy. Right. Well, you know, that's, and yeah, I mean, I think it's that, $300 I dollars more, and like with Hannah renting her house, they paid a $300 pet deposit. So, I mean, you could consider it that it's $300 more I mean, I, than I, it was. I mean, I think we just have to sign the lease when we bring, I thought the lease was on. Fox County side, they wasn't that part of our new contract that we'd find them someplace and they signed the lease, not us. I think you're right. Ooh, um, you might, might, you might want, yeah, you might want to check that. I was thinking that. I thought we said we'll give you a stipend because some right. cops have a family, some cops can yep. live in a smaller place, and we'll give you so much money a month. Yep. For the lease, I, and then if you needed a five bedroom house on the water and you wanted to spend. Your own money, you could get it, but they were they were in charge of. I thought that isn't that in the. Maggie, you did get that. a copy of the contract, right? I didn't read read that, and I when I read Marjorie's email, I should have gone upstairs and gotten that contract, and I didn't. I just kind of maybe that didn't get put in, but we talked about it. I think it says the did. town shall provide a housing allowance. 
for any full-time resident deputy. Housing rental payments will be capped at 12,000 per year. And then heating fuel and electricity will be capped at 5,000. Well, this sounds like what we used to do when, um, well, like Larry Hazeltine. Is that the new, is one that's outdated? That was the last one. This is, through December 2022. Interesting because it's quite well, it's 40 hours. It's four days, but it's 40 hours. So that's considered, although it's not full time. Living. No, I was thinking that Jake was right that we had, had opted out on that. But anyway, apparently not. It couldn't hurt to double check, but it's just got the contract up there. Okay. Well, whatever. So well, I, mean, I I think that we um we need a place for them to stay, and I think it's if they're gonna let them bring deputy dog, then that's a good thing. Three hundred hours more. But it puts us over our. It's well, a, we still have money in the line anyway. Well, yeah. I did not check that. Out. But yeah, yeah we do. If we capped it at ten thousand, this puts us to twenty five. More than twenty five hundred dollars over the set, but we have don't we have money because we don't aren't getting the second. I mean, it puts us forty five hundred dollars over. The I, think we already, I think we already we broke that, that one off of the budget. Yeah. Oh, oh, we did. Oh, we I didn't include so. that in. I don't know. Just I guess we'll have to make it work. I'm not sure there's money in there from what we're not paying. In. So. We kind of need some place for Mister Stanford to want to move here. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Yes, we should. We should. We should Figure out that language of the lease thing, and then where else is it gonna? Where else are we gonna go? Right. I mean, we can't really vote on it now until we get a copy of the lease from patients. Yep. So, well, usually we just tell the. Should I keep going? Yes. Don't please. we usually just let the town manager sign those when they come in? The lease. Yeah. Go ahead. I'd have to review it. Um, so I, as I said, I had met with Brent Bridges on August 19th. He did give me updated project plans for the transfer station. If anybody wants um, copies of that, or just let me know. So I'm looking at applying for the fall main bond bank issue. And I also have to coordinate that project with ordering a new compactor. That money is in the uh, reserve. Um, I tried to list out some of the things that are going on in terms of ordinances and policies and infrastructure and other things. Uh, it, you know, the list is long. And in, well, I think I guess from my perspective, you might want to think about what our priorities are in terms of all of the different. Um, as far as the, the bylaws. Um, I had suggested we wait for DW to get back so that he we'd have a full board to discuss that. Okay. So that could come up in October. Um, the, in, the ordinances, I feel, should be in one meeting. All of them should be discussed in one meeting. Well, the sewer, yeah, jeez. <laughs> That's my opinion on those should have. Are we going to be able to do all of them at once? Well, we're going to have to, we may have to meet. We have oh. a land, we don't we have for the land use for well, the land use ordinance. We have the planning working, commission for that, right? Right. I'm working with the planning commission and um, mid coast council of governments are helping us with those revisions. So that's right in the works and the, and the helicopter ordinance, I thought they... I don't know what's going on, what you want to do with that. I thought it was kind of dead because we couldn't do anything because the FBA had control over everything yeah. from what I can remember. But, well, they have jurisdiction, like we said. Yeah, right. but on the land... No, they have jurisdiction of where people land helicopters, according to what we saw. You have to have like a express site if you want to land, keep landing there over and over and over again. 
kind of seemed like that was something that we couldn't regulate anyway, but. Is that something Matthew, would he, Eddie, Matthew, Eddie, would that be something that he would be able to help with? Well, I'd like to keep him focused on the land use right. ordinance. Um, what the correspondence that Andy Dorr had with Maine Municipal about it, um, they <clears throat> kept saying uh, and strongly recommending that he consult with the town attorney on any proposed ordinance. So I, I guess don't, I don't think you ever did that. No. no, no, we didn't. Should we? We just kind of tabled to that when we had so many people up here telling us yes. different things that we. Someone brought this to us. It wasn't something that we brought up ourselves, anyway. Yeah, somebody wanted us to write an ordinance or, or adopt it, yeah. adopt or whatever, and then we found out that half of it was illegal. Well, I thought that we, I thought that that we gave it to the, I thought the planning commission wanted us to hand it over to them for review. I thought so too, that and the quarry, which we've already, right. we've already finished the quarry ordinance, but yeah, maybe we should just ask them, can, if you speak with Wes or someone on the planning commission, can you ask them if that's been something that they looked into, Marjorie? So you remember, remember that then, that they, they wanted us to send it to them. They didn't want us to pass an ordinance because it's like a land, it's basically it. yeah. a land use ordinance. The helicopter ordinance was a land use ordinance, and they they wanted to look at it as a planning commission, I thought, and they haven't yes. brought it back to us. And they were quite vehement about it. Yeah, they, that, that they we didn't run it by them in the, the first place. We didn't they gave us the devil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do remember. Okay, it's coming back to me now. Yeah. Yes, I do remember. I, I, yeah, they kind of. Yeah, uh, so they, I yeah. thought that's what we did. We said, well, why don't you guys take it, take and, it and bring it back to us with some. Whatever With your vision, vision. Yes. wanted. Yes. That's what last we were at last. Yes, that right. was this spring or last. It was this past spring, late winter. Yeah. It's in the spring. winter, yeah. They're obviously wicked about it because it is on Facebook now. Oh, yes. It's on Facebook. So that's all. I, don't I have thought that's all. I guess. So do you right. want us to make a, a list of priorities out of these? No, I was yeah. just kind of putting all that, putting it all out there, you know, just. Perspective. To make the point that we've got a lot of work to do, um, and if there are things that you want to prioritize, then well, can can I can I make a suggestion? Like Andy used to have us say like one or two things that were most important to us. Can we have that for when GW gets back? So there's all five of us, and we can say what we'd like to accomplish right. in the next. Can we have that on October fourth? And then all of us can come up with two. Of the, Andy used to do that with us and say. What what would you like to see done? You know, what, what if you list. had a goal? It's not even out of this list, but what like two goals that you'd like to see accomplished this year? And then we try and figure out how to accomplish them. But I think that might be good instead of us just sitting here saying this, this, there's more ordinances and stuff than what you put on here, too. That might be a priority for someone else. So can we just say on October 4th meeting that we'll each come in with two or three things that we'd like to see? prioritized or worked on in the next well certainly um, this wasn't meant to be any kind of a structured discussion i i guess uh, um maybe i was feeling a bit overwhelmed and i can see just, why uh, <laughs> well <laughs> it's quite a list just um uh, i can structure it in a different way that no I, but I that's, how, that's how we've done it in the last we've each said something we'd like to see Worked on, right. you know, and then we try to get it done. Well, know. we can check off purchasing policy. We just discussed that, and that one's gone. We just the, we, well, we just voted to, on that one. Well, so we, we can check that one off. No, we need to finalize that. Or finalize it, right? But so that's in the works. The selectman bylaws will do in October. <clears throat> the downtown project is in process. The policy for use of. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Policy for use of town office building. That one we just voted on and passed. So that one can be checked off done. the list. The land use ordinance is being worked on. Correct, Marjorie? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. The purchasing policy we can go back to another time. The sewer use ordinance. Is that ready to bring forward? No, I have no idea what the sewer commissioners really want. And I don't, you know. So we can. It needs work to work on what amendments. 
Yeah, it needs work. So we can have that on our agenda for our sewer meeting in October. Mm -hmm. Okay, could you just make a note of that to make sure, sure yeah. we put that on the agenda for that meeting? All right, so that one is um, something and the language from Maggie's working on. Okay, so yeah, and then for infrastructure, downtown's in the works. We need to discuss the painting yeah, of that purchasing policy. I think we ought to just let Marjorie hire who she, that we approve who Marjorie wants to hire and not put it out to bid because it's painting and you're not going to get any bids. We've got two bids and that's probably as good as we're going to get. And if we're going to have any work done on that building this year, we need to, need to do it right now. So does anybody have any thoughts on that? I thought we had a discussion last week that we would look at that one side and go from there. And we didn't decide how we we're going to do it. Yeah, I can't find any carpenters. Well, it's not going to get done this fall. That's for certain. Well, I mean, what happens if we run into a bunch of boards that need to be replaced when they start scraping it? If we don't have a car carpenter to replace them, then we're going to be screwed. Well, I don't really think so, but... Um, well, I think you're going to find some. And this Washington school maintenance has been on the list of things to have done for at least two years, maybe three, with the rot and everything that's been found. So there's another um, construction issue, the carpenter issue. These other projects are in the works. Ambrose Hill project is kind of a is something that we're in the works, but hopefully we'll be moving forward. Ambrose Hill coalition of uh, collaboration. And I make a motion that we move on to report of members for as long as you're, I mean, I just want to make sure that Marjorie's at ease with what we, I don't want her, to, I don't want her to be upset about, you know, getting, that she's got too much to worry no, about. I don't, don't misunderstand me. I, I didn't um, I think she wants us I to think about stuff yeah, before we bite off more stuff. stuff to do. Yeah. yeah. She I doesn't want us to throw a moratorium in her lap, is what she's yeah. saying. Okay. All right. Let's we'll move on then. Like, I think that that so you guys have, but you got something to say? I mean, okay. we have a list. No, no, it's just the next thing on the list. Yes. Do we still have an executive session? I was just curious. Yes. Okay. Uh, we don't? No. Okay. Okay. I just want. I didn't know. Was that okay? Uh, David Callen said to put it on there in case. In case we need it. To. I don't know. In case no. we won't. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, report of members. I have a quick question uh, that maybe Madri can ask. Firework permits from the, at night. There was the last few nights we've had a lot of them. What are we? What can we do about this? It's illegal. Uh, uh, so, but we waived the fee three or four years ago for fireworks permits. We just wanted people to come up and get them. Right. And they're not doing it. I, I no, what we did. We, there was a ten dollar fee or something before, and we said. All right, we're going to waive the fee. People, please just come up and get one. And some people well, did. But so there's no do, fee, so it shouldn't. What, right. Maybe we should put a $100 fine for each violation. I'm sure there is a fine, but if you could get the cops to enforce it or anyone. That's part of, that, that would be part of our police discussion. Well, yeah, it should be along with squealing tires and yeah. everything else that's always on there. It, that that it, never gets addressed. Well, maybe it, it needs to. It does, but we brought it up. For those guys every time and and nothing ever changed right and like he said some of the same concerns that are on your list have been on the list for a decade what, so more than that but yeah I, I remember one of the emails about the sheriff's department but i think a lot of the times the sheriffs will write these people up and then it gets over to the district attorney mm -hmm. and they'll drop it and nothing happens nothing and they happens. but it's their job to keep writing exactly. them up exactly but they just don't they just say well they're not going to do anything about it why should i which is not job. the attitude that we want the cops to have. Good job. That should be brought up to you during the meeting because I've heard him say that before. Yep. If none, I forget it, excuse. if I forget it, you should remind me or I'm someone say if we ever get our meeting. Right. Yeah. 
I, I do think that we should have a meeting with, like you said, with the other people, because like you said, he other other people wasn't there. Didn't Polky want to have a meeting with like a two other people? Didn't you say oh, the a, chief deputy and and someone from the union budgeting committee or something like that? Mm -hmm. or, I mean, because like you said, I can't just tell someone they have to come out there. So we mm -hmm. need to know if there's things that we can change and things that right. we can't we need change. To so we need decision it, makers. Right. That's why he said he would like to have the meeting with those other two well, other we need people. Decision makers. Right. right. So I think that would be smart to wait for yeah. at least one of the other people. I'll follow up with the sheriff. I mean, we can Zoom those meetings. You know, they don't, we don't need exactly. them. Exactly. Um, yeah, we need them in person. We've had them out here in person, but I mean, wasn't that what his email said? There was two other people on it. I can't remember exactly. I have to yes. go back and look at it. But he said that it would be more productive if he had those people with him when he had the meeting because he sense. only has so much power. You know, I think we should try and schedule that meeting sometime <laughs> whenever we can, whenever they can schedule it. Yes. But you said Zoom, but you don't want to. Um, no, no, I, no, no, no. I said. Oh, oh. Okay. I'd rather be about the person than on Zoom. A preference. Okay. Is there any other reports, no. members? Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor.